Hey there guys, we've currently got one of the deadest weeks in a long time on Brave XVS Global. Uh, there is nothing going on this week, just item world and a boring banner. So I haven't really done anything or posted a video in a while, but... Uh, I figured I would just cover like the news for next week as something to do because like I said this week has just been super dead so instead of just posting nothing for like a week and a half I guess I'll just post a news video I don't usually post news videos but there is nothing else to do in Brave XBS so I may as well cover next week's news which is going to be a little bit more interesting I'm also going to briefly talk about the Japanese news coming this week as well so the first thing I'll point out is maintenance is a day earlier than usual. So it's starting on Tuesday night for North America. It may be different depending on your time zone. But maintenance is starting 24 hours earlier than it usually does for the week. Now the new events still start on Thursday. So the new events will not be available when maintenance ends on Wednesday morning. It's just the actual maintenance itself is a day earlier. So don't be caught off guard. You know, make sure you spend all your item world orbs, your arena orbs, etc., etc., before maintenance begins on Tuesday night. But the events will only begin on Thursday. Um, one of the events this starting this week is a second um, players vote campaign. Uh, there's three options here, and I don't really want to like influence your opinion. Um, th this is a player's vote. You should vote for what you personally personally want, but I'll cover the options briefly. So option one is two Neo Visions of choice. You can select any two Neo Visions you want within the guidelines. So notice right here, this is only for permanent units from June 29th and earlier. So that means no limited units, no seasonals. Um, no collaborations. Also, the banners are from before Ling and Louise. Ling and Louise are not included, and neither are any units that came out after them. So you can't use this to choose like the new Tifa, the new Sephiroth when he comes, etc. This is only for older units before Ling and Louise. So Ling and Louise are not included. It's a very important distinction here. This is June 29th. And earlier but there are still a lot of great units like you know Arden, Noctis, Lunafreya. There's a lot of good options here. So this is two Neo Visions of choice. The other option or well, the second option is 200 fragments. Now this according to Shally in the video, the update video, you can use this divided however you choose. So you can use 200 fragments on a single unit to bring them from like EX2 to EX3 for Clash of Wills. You can divide this 100 among two units. You can go 50 among four units, however you want. Now option two is more value than option one because 200 fragments is the equivalent of four Neo Visions instead of two. But of course the catch is you have to already own those Neo Visions. So if you've never pulled like Arden, for example, and you want to use them on Arden, option two won't do anything for you. You need option one, but option one, you get less total value. So overall, that really depends what you personally want. So I would, I would recommend option one or option two based on the player, you know, vote the, the way you personally decide to vote. Uh, option three, in my opinion, is, is the bad option. Uh, I will say, I hope no one votes for option three. It's, all, it's only my opinion. If you really love option three, option three, you know, you do you. But option three, um, it gives you two STMR moguls and two trust moguls. And now while STMR moguls are certainly nice, I find that significantly less value than two new visions of choice or 200 fragments of choice. Um, so, so I hope no one votes for option three. Go for option one or two. You know, that's that that is the amount I will personally try to influence your vote. But as far as which is better between option one or option two, um, for those two, decide for yourself. They're, they're both overall good options. Option two gives you the two of choice. Option or option one gives you the you know the, the two of choice. Option two gives you more value, but you have to have already pulled the units. So there is that. Um, Another thing going on is the Dark Vision Summon. This is just a free pull every day. You can't really make any decisions here. You just pull. Uh, the pull are these units here. Um, overall, you know, it's a little bit older units, but they are still pretty good. Well, most of them are pretty good. Uh, Terra is still great. Rain and Fina are nice. Starlight Elena is a super troll. Uh, Dark Fina and Saw are a decent unit. So if you get one of the Neos, you, you've got a three out of four chance of getting a good one. If you pull Starlight Elena, you know, my apologies. 
And then the five star pool, um, Aaron Neoprompto, Ignacio Beatrix, Chato. Uh, overall, this five star pool is pretty low quality, you know, bad, bad. Uh, Ignacio's good. Beatrix is good, we just got her for free. Shadow's fine. I guess overall it's okay. But anyway, this is just a, a pull per day. You don't really, you know, there's, there's there's no decision to be made here. You log in, you do your pull, you either get lucky or you don't. Last time this ran, I think I think I got one Neovision from it. I forgot what it was. But I did get one Neo the last time this ran. So, you know, it happens. So there you go. Dark Visions is also starting this week. Um, as usual, I wish they wouldn't do this, but they're, they're dividing it among four days. Yeah, four days. I hate the way they do this because you got to wait until Monday to do the hard stages, and that means you that means you can't do it over the weekend. I'd much rather do it over the weekend. Gumi, please update update this someday instead of make, make, making us wait until Monday. But it is what it is. Um, so the first four days, you know, I'll post videos when they come out. They're very very easy. You go in there and one shot it, or I'll try to make some budget videos as well. And then the hard stuff is on Monday. Um, the, the three hard bosses this this month is going to be a physical fight weak to water and earth. It's a human. So um, earth is, you know, most of the global originals recently are earth element. Um, water, you know, Tifa. We're getting Tifa next week. So the, if you pull Tifa, you're going you're gonna to damage cap there very easily. Uh, it should be overall easy to damage cap anyway. Um, water and earth are two strong elements. The magical fight is a dragon weak to fire and darkness. Um, you know, fire, we've got Louise, we've got Terra. Uh, for darkness, we've got Ibarra if you own her. Um, Ibarra plus the Danes STMR will probably damage cap all by herself. Um, depending on how, how much the boss is buffed or not, it might it might take more. But you know, if you've got like Terra, Ibarra, and Louise, that's gonna be a very easy damage cap. But on Monday, I'll be working on those, trying to post multiple videos of options. And the final boss is going to be um, a beast. And of course, final boss is strong versus everything. So you pick your favorite element and you go for it. Uh, so you know, when that comes out on Monday, I'll definitely have multiple videos, and we'll see how that goes. The rewards are still not updated from the Dark Vision reward. This is kind of a little little bit of a disappointment. Um, the Japanese version, and you know, I, I, I will reference the Japanese version a few times in, in, in this news video. I know people, some people get kind of irritated, like, oh, Global is its own game, don't compare it to Japanese. Well, I disagree. I think we should compare it to the Japanese version because it copies most things from the JP version. And one of the things it did not copy was the updated Dark Vision reward. We are like four months late for this, we are still getting very outdated rewards in Dark Visions. I wish this wasn't the case. So please, Global, update these rewards to the more current ranking rewards. But anyway, we've still got the old rewards, you know, got to deal with it. We're also getting two of, of the upgraded weapons. Um, well, we're getting the Great Sword, which is brand new. Um, you can bring this up to rank 11 or, you know, plus 10, which is, you know, the base plus 10, which is effectively rank 11. Uh, so we're actually not getting the rank 12, which again, JP got rank 12 right away. They're delaying that on global for whatever reason. Um, but for this month, we're getting the great sword and the sword to plus 12. So the, the sword I, I, is really good to do. I recommend you do the sword. Um, you might want to reconsider doing the great sword right away if you're low on dark matter because great sword... We don't have a great sword in peril yet on global. We've got multiple sword in peril. We've got Elena, we've got Cacteria, we've got Arden, and we've got Nox. We have four units that do sword in perils. So Dark Ragnarok is great. Dark Claymore is really not going to see a whole lot of use until we eventually someday hopefully get Cloud's EX Awakening or EX Skills, which gives us a great sword in peril. But until that happens, I recommend you don't really go deep on the Dark Claymore. But of course, if you love great swords, by all means, do what you want. And that's pretty much it, uh, you know, the old stuff. Now, if we follow JP, then next month we should be getting the more upgrades to other equipment. I This, this is by memory, I could be wrong here. I believe the rod, fist, and the bow, maybe, came next for the next upgrades. I don't remember specifically, but anyway, uh, when the rod eventually comes, I, I, I would definitely prioritize upgrading the Dark Visions rod to the max possible allowed. So try to save a little bit of Dark Matter for the rod when it comes eventually. Um, one of the events we're getting is the Final Fantasy VII Remake MOG event, the town that never sleeps. 
This is a very classic MOG event. You know, you go in, you farm currency. It's super easy. It dies in one hit. Just bring whatever you want. Um, we are getting the updated Neovisions Awakened of Reno, which becomes Reno and Root. If you have the old Reno from the event um, like a year ago, whenever it was, six months ago, I don't remember. But when Reno came out, um, you can upgrade him. If you don't have him, that's fine. This event gives you a brand new one. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think on the Japanese version, they did give enough shards to upgrade both Renos. I think... I, this is going by memory. I could be mistaken. Um, but Global may change it. We don't know if Global is going to allow you to upgrade both Renos if you have the old one. There's not really much reason to anyway. Reno is overall is not the greatest New Visions Awakening. Like, he's fine and all. He's a tag chainer. He does um, Wind and Thunder, if I remember correctly. Or Wind and Earth. In his shift form, his base form does Thunder, I think. I, I, I'm, going, I'm going by memory here. Um, but anyway, he's, he's completely free. He, he can go to EX3 completely free and based on the Japanese version he does not use pearls to upgrade so this is a great unit for clash of wills because assuming we follow the JP version and we probably will um, you can bring him all the way to EX3 without spending any red pearls at all so he's just like Faisalit and Wolf Adele he's a EX3 unit which is amazing for clash of wills for a budget you can bring you know more EX3 units to get that better score if you want a Clash of Wills unit. Um, and again, you know, as far as outside of Clash of Wills, he's like a tag chainer. His damage is pretty far behind, but it's serviceable if you really like Reno and Rude. Um, the gear, from, oh, this STMR, you know, not upgraded. You know, we, it's old, old stuff. Here's his skills. Again, tag chaining, um, earth, wind, and lightning element. He does breaks and all. He's, he's fine for a free unit. Um, the event, you get tickets, you get gear. The gear from this event is not super good. Like, e even the upgraded version of this, the 165 attack and magic um, mace. Like, really, who, who even uses maces? I know Reno does, but whatever. You know, the gear, it's fine. It's, it's, it's like for newer players. If you're a newer player, this might be good for you. But for most players, it could be very forgettable. Uh, and then, you know, golden bombs. Here's the bonuses. The, the free Aerith we're getting. I'm going to cover her in a minute. You get her, you get the Neo Visions from the old Final Fantasy 7 units. Um, don't forget, everyone, please put a bonus unit on your friend slot to help out your friends for farming, etc., etc. And there's, there's a bonus. If you pull Nicole, he's a, he's a smaller bonus, but most people probably have a lot of Final Fantasy 7 units at this point. If you don't, Nicole works. There you go. Uh, you know, the EX bonuses. Lost maps, old content. So this is going to be one of the cooler events. It's kind of like buried in the news here. But this Lord of the Sewers is probably the most interesting event uh, we're getting the entire week. Is Lord of the Sewers. Uh, this is the first of the EX stages that you may have seen from my JP videos. Where you need to kill these bosses very quickly for all the, all the rewards. So this one, assuming that Global didn't change it. You need to kill him by turn two for this mystery crystal thing. Now, the mystery crystal um, on the JP version is used to upgrade a, a Neovision unit to level 130, or you can use it to give a vision card slot to a seven star unit. Um, Global may change the way they handle it, but that's the way it works in the JP server. Uh, so I will again have both a quick clear and a budget version of Lord of the Sewers on Thursday probably. Um, but it is going to be, assuming the global didn't nerf it, it, has, it is pretty tricky to do it in two turns. Especially if you didn't pull um, the new Tifa. But I, I plan to have videos of that on Thursday. Uh, you know, pog farming, whatever. So there's that. Um, there's also the Chronicle Battle. Very typical Chronicles. Um, you know, if you're a veteran player, this is going to die on turn one. If you're a newer player, you know, bring a breaker and the boss just won't even hurt you. Uh, but typical, it's Final Fantasy VII, bring, bo bring bonus units and you can farm it up. Um, the gear from this Chronicle is pretty pretty low quality a little bit. Uh, so here's this one. Um, it's a, an accessory that gives attack and attack power percent, which is nice and all, but it's this 30 flat attack, which is pretty low these days. Uh, it does give killer versus beast and undead, but it's only for Final Fantasy VII units. Now, this is good for Final Fantasy VII units if you need more killers on your, um, you know, your Cloud, your Tifa, your your Sephiroth if you pull them. So that's fine. But other than the killers, just for FF7 units, it's a little weak. 
Same thing for the armlet. Um, it's kind of weak. It's, you know, 30, 30 flat magic. That's really low. But it does have magical killers for beast and undead. So if you need the killers specifically for Final Fantasy VII, it's fine. But this is not something that is really worth your time for the most part. Uh, and then we're going to get the... De the Cetra Descendant Aerith Enhancement Quest. These are quests we're going to be getting. It's very simple quest. Um, if, I, if I remember correctly from the JP server, it was just, you know, basic stuff like, you know, clear arena, clear item world, clear 20 quests, do like 20 limit burst. Just the very generic stuff. It's super easy. And you will get all the materials to upgrade her to EX2. Now, this is going to be across three different weeks. So you're probably not going to get EX, well you're definitely not going to get EX2 until the third week. So that means you actually won't have EX2 Aerith for Dark Visions unless you pull more of her on the banner. We're going to cover that in a minute. But if you're just going for the freely obtained Aerith, you will not have her EX2 in time for Dark Vision. Because that's going to take the third week and Dark Visions will be closed by then which may um, influence your decision to chase further copies of her or not. But there you go, we're gonna get her EX2 over the course of three weeks. Now here is the banner this week. We're getting um, Avalanche, Jesse, and Aerith. We're gonna cover Jesse real quick, then we're gonna come back to Aerith. Uh, Jesse's a seven star. If you pull on the banner, you'll get her. <laughs> you might get her, my bad. Um, she's on the banner. Um, if you don't wanna pull, you can, you can unit of choice her. She is a support unit. She's, she's pretty good. She's got um, a lot of LB fill skill. She's got breaks. Her LB is an 87% defense and spirit break for AoE. And it's a 120% in peril to every single element. So she's really good for offensive support. She can also entrust units so you can spam those LB. Now she has 100% passive provoke just passively just like kenny crow even naked she is 100 percent passive provoke which is convenient she also has some evasion so she's a really good evasion provoke tank for like dark visions and all that her stmr is a resistance helmet um her tmr her tmr is really good it's 20 percent evasion it's 20 percent draw attacks so if you're a player that just doesn't have any of the draw attacks gear, her TMR is really good for setting up a 100% passive provoke um, support unit or something. Uh, that's pretty much all she's really there for. She's a support unit. She's a good unit. If you get her off banner, she's great. Her STMR is, you know, okay. It's not like the best or anything, but it's, it's decent. And then Aerith. Like I mentioned, Aerith is completely free up to EX2. If you want to pull for more of her, if you want to get her to EX3, you have to pull for her or you know farm her in the shard dungeon over time but um here's the banner it's a it's a step up banner this is doable infinite times um this is in my opinion a downgrade from the jp version uh we're not getting the 10 neovisions guaranteed like the jp version did we're not getting the fragments guaranteed like the jp version did and they've nerfed the banner overall um lower percent etc so it's a 5% Neovisions on the final step only, but it's only a 1% on banner rate. So this step up is, is unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. Um, and you need to pull 20 times or 20 steps to get a guaranteed error. That's going to be 60,000 Lapis for the guaranteed error. And according to Shally in the update video we had, you can actually keep going for even more guaranteed copies, but it's gonna cost 28 pulls after the first. That's gonna be 84,000 beyond the first. So very, very expensive if you wanna go for deeper. Um, you know, for most players, you're not, you're not gonna to wanna to pull on Aerith because you get her EX2 for free, and the EX3 is not that big a deal. Uh, it will be a much bigger deal for Tifa and Sephiroth, and I might cover them in another, if this, if this video is popular, I might cover you know, the news more often. But yeah, Tifa and Sephiroth, when they come late, they're not coming this week, but when they come in the next few weeks, um, pulling them all the way to EX3 is gonna be a much bigger deal than Aerith. But Aerith, to get to her EX3, um, that's gonna give you her vision card, which is, we're gonna cover that in a moment. Um, yeah, we're gonna get that in just a second. But for Aerith, as far as a unit herself, she is a buffer that does 400% to all stat buffs and 250% um, limit burst damage to the entire party. 
that's on her limit burst. And her limit burst starts filled at the beginning of the battle once you eventually get her to EX2. So she's a really good buffer. She can also imbue fire and holy. She can amplify holy by 45%, fire by 30%. Uh, she's got some overall minor support stuff, like she can do um, plus two protect and shell for the whole party, and that's that's mostly it. Her kit is a little bit bare bones, um, but once you get her to EX2 on global, she can do a rod in peril and a killer buff to humans, and oh my god, I forgot the other one. It's humans and machines, maybe? It might be even previewed on the on the skill list here. It's not. Um, yeah, I, I should, probably should have had, had the wiki page open, but, um, I believe it's humans and machines, killer. But, yeah, she's, she's a really good support unit. She's also a tag chainer, I should have mentioned. She's a tag chainer in her shift form. And she can use holy in her base form to, um, to do really good finishing damage. Her holy scales on MP and spirit. So, if you're, if you're going for her DPS form with, um, holy... Give her as much spirit and MP as you possibly can. Uh, now the vision card, like I mentioned. Now the vision card on Aerith is different than usual. Y you have to bring her all the way to EX3 to get the card. At EX level 1, she will not give you a vision card. But she will give you a vision card select token to allow you to choose an older permanent vision card. Which is nice. Um, you know, some good options are like the new ones on Ling and Louise. Those are both really good cards. They have high attack, high magic, some LB damage. Maybe if you want an LB damage card for um, an FFBE unit, you could go for something like uh, uh, Coralie's card or um, Diverti's card. It's good for Final Fantasy Brave Exvius units because it's got 50% it's got LB damage. Uh, some other good options would be like Saul's card is good for just pure magic. You know, you can't you can't pick things like Ibarra's card because it's limited. But overall, you get a you get a lot of picks with the cards. But Aerith's card, um, it's a good card and all, but I, I wouldn't recommend anyone really to chase this specifically because um, it does give a hundred magic and spirit and fifty LB damage, which is nice and all. But it also gives only a hundred percent spirit, which is not super important for LB users. Um, other than like I guess Shu Yi, it could be good for her. But the 100% magic is locked to Final Fantasy VII units. And the only mage in Final Fantasy VII is Aerith herself. So the card is okay for her. But most of the time, she's going to rather Yoshi Kiri's card for the spirit. Because she doesn't use her LB, her LB for damage. She wants um, Holy for her DPS. And Aerith's Holy scales on spirit. And spirit, true double hand, is pretty hard to get. Yoshi Kiri's card gives 100 spirit. And then Spirit True Double Hand, which is better for Aerith most of the time. Her own card is, I would say, not worth chasing. Um, you know, that's, that's going to change with Tifa and Sephiroth. But for Aerith, probably don't want to go for EX3. Unless you just really love Aerith. Uh, also, we get the card with the bundle. If you want to buy it, go for it. If not, it'll probably be added to the general pool eventually like the other ones were. And then the exchange shop. This is another... Um, Another pretty big nerf for the banner. If you'll notice here, if you read the fine print, they have removed the Neovision shards from the exchange shop. You know, most of the time you can buy 50 shards from the exchange shop if you pull on the banner. You cannot do that for Aerith. And probably won't be able to for Tifa or Sephiroth either, unless they change their mind. This is like a really enormous nerf, and I'm so disappointed in this. Um, you know... It, it's, it's what they decided to do, but they are they are nerf they are nerfing all the ways to get the shards for these units. They are making it very 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 hard to get um, higher levels of these Final Fantasy VII units to get higher EX levels. Um, you know, now it, it is great that Aerith is completely free up to EX two, but for Tef for Tifa and Sephiroth, uh, these nerfs to the shards are going to make them so expensive, and it's 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 a, it's a real shame. Um, and then, of course, like I said, you get these these tickets. Uh, 20 of them will give you the first copy. 28 of them will give you additional copies. And that's pretty much it for the global news. Um, there's, there's, there's some other stuff like login rewards and the, the daily free 10 pull. I, decide, I decided to not show all that because it's a bunch of smaller newses. Um, you know, the treasure pull and all that. But yeah, we're getting a bunch of free pulls as well. 
So that's pretty much it for Global. We're getting, you know, the Final Fantasy VII, the Mog King, the Chronicle Battle, and then the uh, the Lord of the Sewers is going to be the, 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 the fun thing. This is going to be... I already lost it. Where to go? Where the Lord is? Here it is. Lord of the Sewers. This is this is going to be the the most the most challenging thing this week, and then Dark Visions, of course. But uh, Lord of the Sewers, unless they nerf it, doing it in two turns is really hard. So that'll be fun to figure out. And then the JP server. We're going to cover this very briefly. JP is getting the um, their summer event. It's going to be Summer Neo Visions Faisalus which is going to be a water mage, it seems. Um, if you like Faisalus, you get the bikini version. Uh, we're also getting a Neovisions Summer Freesia on the JP server. This is going to be a support unit. She buffs wind damage and all that. Uh, let's see, the vision card is, here you go, it's like a mixture of magic and spirit. Uh, and for girls only, it'll give you um, spirit and magic uh, double hand and dual wield. So that's a really good vision card, especially for units like um, Yuna, the new Japanese uh, version summoner, um, daughter of Braska Yuna or whatever. Uh, we're also getting a boss rush, which is um, something that hasn't been around for a long time. But if you look here, this is an event that I really love these events. They were so fun when they came out like years ago, but we're getting them again. We're getting um, a boss rush. But look here, this could be the shark and then a slime and then like a fish dude a squid, and then like a water worm. So this will be really fun tomorrow on the JP server. I will, of course, post a video um, from the JP server when we get it. I'm hoping it's challenging. We, I guess we don't know until tomorrow. Uh, they're all water themed for summer. So we'll see how that goes. Um, login rewards, uh, some stream rewards. And yeah, it's a, it's a story event as well. Um, story event. Yeah, here, as whatever. But anyway, that's pretty much it for this coming week on the JP and the global server. So I will see you guys for Dark Visions, Mog Event, Lord of the Sewers. Um, I am not going to be pulling for Aerith. Um, I, I, I'm personally ha happy enough with my EX2 that I'm getting for free. Uh, as far as Tifa and Sephiroth goes, I will decide on their pulls when their banner is closer. So next week or the week after, I will see what I'm deciding to do. So see you guys for more, in more interesting content, hopefully starting on Wednesday for the JP server and Thursday for the global server. See you then.